What's up, Beta Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. As a part of today's video, we're diving into the chain card fork, what it introduces, as well as SIP number 1694. Now, SIP number 1694 aims to move the governance model on Cardano from the three founding entities' hands over into the Cardano community's hands. This means that anybody who holds the ADA token will be able to put out a proposal. Now, that doesn't mean that it has to get approved, but you at least have the ability to guide and suggest how the Cardano protocol should develop. Now, with respect to the chain card fork, this will be introducing a lot of the tooling and infrastructure that we need in order to implement SIP number 1694. So before we go in any further, as always, if you guys do enjoy updates like these, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions or just want to share your opinion, then leave a comment down below. So first things first, let's talk about SIP number 1694. As it stands in terms of governance right now in Cardano, it's heavily controlled by the three founding entities. As I just mentioned there, we have IOG or IOHK. We've also got the Cardano Foundation and Emergo. So as an example, let's say that there is a suggested parameter update on the Cardano blockchain. Because of the fact that the three founding entities are in charge of the Genesis keys, they have to come to agreements in order for those upgrades to take place. So right now there's a total of seven Genesis keys and in order for a potential parameter upgrade to take place, we have to have the agreements of at least five of the seven Genesis keys holders to take place. So you could imagine that right now that leaves Cardano in a somewhat centralized state. However, with the introduction of SIP number 1694, we're now gonna have the ability to have different parties within the Cardano community actually dictate as to whether or not they want those parameter or protocol upgrades to go through. Now, this is with the introduction of what we now have called um, DREPs or delegate representatives, which essentially act as the elected official within the Cardano community. Now, you as an ADA holder have the ability to quote unquote vote for a particular elected official or a particular DREP through your actual ADA. So very similar to how you're able to delegate your ADA to a stake pool, you'll be able to delegate your ADA to a DREP who hopefully aligns with your views which will then vote in favor of what you would have typically voted for. Now, in addition, we have the ability for SPOs or stake pool operators to also have their voice heard. So you can also delegate to an SPO. And then there's also the constitutional committee, which has one job, which is to make sure that all proposed um, parameter upgrades or protocols or just governance actions, right, are constitutional abiding, right? So um, there's gonna be a couple of pieces I wanna dive into here but this is essentially just the foundation. You could definitely expect more content coming out surrounding the um, governance model here on Cardano, the different roles, the different governance actions. And then I'm actually gonna run through some different test cases to hopefully give you a better idea as to how governance could play out once it actually goes live. But before we go any further, let's quickly highlight what SIP number 1694 actually is. It states you that SIP number 1694 is Cardano's first step for the implementation of on-chain community governance. Once implemented, ADA holders will be able to delegate their voting power to representatives who will vote on various governance actions on their behalf. Now, this will eventually leave Cardano in the hands of the community. Again, this is a huge step forward here when it comes to decentralization. Of course, we've got one of the most de decentralized blockchains in terms of nodes or stake pools. But in terms of decision making or governance, that is not yet the case, at least until SIP number 1694 is implemented. So as you can imagine here, this is a huge milestone for the Cardano community and all of the three founding arms um, who have seen Cardano literally from its infancy stage all the way now until maturity. So let's quickly talk about the actual roadmap for governance. And then I wanna quickly highlight the chain card fork, the timeline. And then I also wanna quickly highlight three key pieces that you have to keep in mind when it comes to governance. So diving into the governance roadmap, for the rest of 2024, we have the initial implementation of the draft constitution taking place in Q2. We've just broken in Q2, which means that this should theoretically currently be in development. We also have the implementation of the interim constitutional committee or the CC for short, followed by the core governance tools mainnet launch. So we should have at least the first update when it comes to adding the tools or the infrastructure to implement SIP number 1694. Now, after the release of the actual core governance tools on the mainnet, we all have the DREP Pioneers program. So I mentioned there earlier, the delegate representatives act as 
representatives for the Cardano community. You're essentially able to register as a DREP and anybody can actually go ahead and do that. Once you are confirmed as a DREP, it's going to be up to you to gain delegation and to vote in favor of the delegators that have taken the time to delegate their ADA to you. So you could imagine this being a pretty competitive process, but as Cardano matures and as more DREPs become available, there's going to be more choice in more alignment, right? With a particular DREP, depending on their prior voting history. Following the DREP Pioneer program, we'll have the constitutional workshops taking place between Q2 and Q3. This will aim to establish a lot of the rules in the foundations for the original Cardano constitution. Now in Q2 slash Q3, we'll have the actual chain card fork taking place, and this will implement all of the bootstrapping features for Cardano voting and for Cardano governance. Now, after that, we're going to have an additional chain upgrade, which I believe will introduce the rest of the features, taking the um, governance model out of bootstrapping and putting all of the power again back into the Cardano community's hands. So do keep that in mind. There will be sort of two pieces. The first piece being the actual chain hard fork, introducing the bootstrapping technology, followed by the upgrade, adding the remaining features. Now, after that, we're going to have the annual member meeting in Japan taking place in October. And then we're going to have the actual constitutional convention taking place in December in Argentina, where the Cardano community will have the ability to vote with their ADA as to whether or not they agree with the draft constitution that has been put forth by the constitutional committee. If ratified, that basically means that the um, Cardano constitution basically goes into effect. And moving forward, any governance actions have to abide by that constitution. If it's denied, it's going to have to go back over to the constitutional committee in order for them to fix whatever issues the Cardano community had issues with. So hopefully that gives you guys a better idea as to what we can expect when it comes to governance and the current roadmap. Now that we better understand the roadmap for governance here on Cardano and the implementation of SIP number 1694, I want to do a quick deep dive into the four separate roles when it comes to governance here on Cardano. That includes the delegate representatives or DREPs, the constitutional committee or CC, as well as the stake pool operators and your traditional ADA holders. So moving right on in, I want to start off here by highlighting the constitutional committee or the CC for short. It states here that their job is to vote on the constitutionality of actions. And if the CC oversteps this particular bound, the role can actually be revoked with a no confidence motion. In addition, the role is also revoked automatically when terms expire. So keep this in mind, anybody can apply to become a member for the constitutional committee, however they have to get voted in. Now their job and their only job is to make sure that any of the seven governance actions that come in are in fact abiding with the Cardano constitution. So it's going to be important to make sure that the constitution is written accurately and well so that the CC or the constitutional committee can have a clear and uh, precise answer as to whether or not an action fits the constitution or it doesn't. So that's their only job. Again, keep in mind that this particular position does have terms associated with it. And also keep in mind that the no confidence can apply. So what this basically means is that if the Cardano community doesn't have faith or doesn't believe that the constitutional committee is doing their job, they can go into a vote of no confidence. From there, any other actions governance related will be dropped in that particular epoch until the Cardano community goes back into a vote of confidence. So there are checks and balances here in place to make sure that if the CC isn't doing their job in voting as to the constitutionality of actions is being done correctly, that they can basically be um, stopped, but then also replaced. So there are actions to add or remove members to the CC. So jumping back into the expectations for the CC members, again, anybody can apply, but they have to be voted in and they have terms that do expire. In addition, their only job is to make sure that governance actions either meet or not meet the Cardano constitution. Following that, they cannot create any new initiatives. And last but not least, new members are to be voted in by SPOs or DREPs. Hopefully that makes sense. Next, let's talk a little bit more about the DREP or the delegate representative role. So it states here that DREPs directly cast votes on all governance actions and DREPs represent those ADA holders 
delegating stake to them. Again, they're representatives or elected officials directly within the Cardano community. So you could, you could imagine a scenario where you have a DREP that you align with and you delegate your ADA to them and they basically have the duty, right, to understand actions, but then to vote on your behalf. If they vote in um, contrary to what you believe, you can always re-delegate, right? So there's going to be an incentive in order for those DREPs to maintain delegation by making sure that they're voting in accordance with those that have delegated their ADA to them. Now, in terms of roles, this is available for anybody to register. And in addition to that, each DREP will be able to vote with all of the ADA delegated to them. In addition, the ADA can migrate from DREP to DREP at any point, again, depending on how they vote. And this is what makes the model a little bit different than how it's currently done, for example, like in the US government. Right now in the US government, or for example, even with the presidency, right, you vote one single time, and no matter um, how you vote, once that president is elected and is in office, they have the ability to do whatever they want. There's no way for you to remove your vote or to bring that over to another um, representative, right? So with the DREP model, it's going to be a little bit different, but it's going to incentivize for um, DREPs to act in accordance, right, with their delegators. Otherwise, they face the, the issue of actually losing delegation, right, which would hinder or lessen the power of their actual votes in future governance actions. Now, anybody can register and become a DREP. And with this particular role, there are no term limits. So that's going to break down the second role. Third, we have Cardano stake pool operators. This is probably the most already understood role because SPOs have already been a huge player or key players within the Cardano ecosystem. But in a nutshell, SPOs can vote on specific governance action types. So the Constitutional Committee, their job is just to vote on the constitutionality of a particular action. The DREPs can vote on everything and the stake pool operators can only vote on certain things. Now, those are typically related, excuse me, to parameter upgrades. Um, and I'll break down the actual governance actions in a separate video. Again, I just want to go ahead and just take the time to lay down the foundation to talk about the chain hard fork, SIP number 1694, and I want to break down the four roles. Now, when it comes to stake pool operators, again, they use the ADA delegated to their stake pool as voting power, and they can use it, right, amongst different proposals. Last but not least, anybody with an active stake pool can vote in these governance actions as long as it's a particular action where an SPO can vote. Now, the last role that I want to highlight as a part of today's video are the traditional ADA holders. So you have delegated ADA holders or delegating ADA holders who are able to either delegate to a stake pool operator or a DREP. Now, there's also non-delegated ADA holders who are essentially ADA holders who don't do any of those things that I just mentioned before. So this is somebody who holds ADA, but that doesn't want to delegate to a DREP or they don't want to delegate to a stake pool. This basically means that their ADA will not be used in any of the voting process. That will do it here for today's video, an introduction into the governance model, talking a little bit about SIP number 1694, the chain hard fork, which introduces the infrastructure for governance here on Cardano, as well as the current state of governance being done through the Genesis keys held by the three founding entities. Now, in my future videos, I'll be breaking down the seven governance actions and exactly which of the four parties are able to vote for each of those actions. So definitely make sure to stay tuned. I hope you guys found this particular video to be helpful. If you did, or if you just learned anything along the way, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, breaking down everything in Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me, then make sure to leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.